Good morning, everybody. My name is Abigail Obura. I work for the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention uh, in uh, Kenya. I am in public health, and I coordinate an aflatoxin project uh, in Kenya within the CDC program. Now, um, Delia did mention something very interesting about uh, the challenges that we have in Kenya with regards to aflatoxin. And um, very interestingly, if I can go back to the outbreaks that we had from uh, 2004 way through 2007, uh, these were actually um, uh, epidemiological uh, investigations did find out that uh, maize, homegrown maize, was the source of the aflatoxicosis. We had over 500 cases with a case fatality rate of 40. Now, what does that tell us? This is really, truly a challenge. It was a challenge then, and it continues being a challenge today as the CDC report uh, from uh, the ACIRO survey conducted in 2011 shows uh, serum samples were actually analyzed for aflatoxin B1. And the results were actually very provocative because 78% of the samples run had detectable levels of aflatoxin. And the exposure did um, persist across the spectrum of age, gender, and socioeconomic you know, parameters. So what does that tell us? However rich, however poor you are, you are at risk. So if we are to look at any interventions, please, there is no area to, you know, there is no population that should be set aside as safe. We are all at risk. But Delia did also mention that all is not lost. There are, you know, uh, actions that we can actually put in place to, uh, as interventions. Now, one big public health challenge is that there is no prophylaxis for aflatoxicosis, treatment of aflatoxicosis. Now, the past, the past outbreaks that we did have uh, CDC was called upon to come and help, you know, in the response. And all that happened was taking cases to hospitals to just be managed, being given, uh, say, glucose and all that. So that is one major area that should also be looked at. Laboratory capabilities is another challenge. I want to believe that a number of you have challenges that you are actually, uh, say, thinking about, and I believe we shall be sharing through this uh, particular, uh, uh, you know, uh, discussion. And uh, finally, I would also want to mention that uh, there is great hope. We have seen studies happen in, uh, say, Ghana, uh, that is with the use of clay binders in animal feed. And there is also an aspect of the air classified calcium silicate that is to be used in uh, humans. That is work under progress. So there is hope. We shouldn't give up. These are things that can happen. Thank you. Thank you, Abigail. So there's a concern. It's a concern for all of us, yes? Yes. What's the role of, what, what, what type of research do you think? I mean, is it just, you mentioned capacity building, building laboratories. What's the research agenda here? Is this from your perspective? Uh, for starters, screening is a major challenge. Screening for aflatoxins, especially for the subsistence farmers. Commercially, that would be, okay, it is easier uh, screening for aflatoxins, say, at industry level. But the hardest hit is the subsistence farmer down there. So if we can, say, decentralize those, uh, the capacities, the laboratory capacities to ground level, which is a challenge in itself, uh, I, I, I believe that would be an area that we should give greater 
uh, uh, focus attention to, yeah. Okay. You're, and you're coming from a public health background. Yeah? Yes. So um, this is probably quite a lot of agricultural people here. I mean, yes, in terms yes. of partners, I mean, is this really a health issue, an agriculture issue? I mean, where should we be looking for the for the for the partners in doing this work? Actually, it is a mix. You cannot divorce agriculture from health and all that. It is, we should actually be focusing on all partners. All partners. All partners. Okay, thanks, we might come back on that.